Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue from Middle Tennessee State University, we visit with Beverly Keel, chair of MTSU's Department of Recording Industry, to discuss her role in bringing national focus to gender and equity in country music. We learn more about MTSU's Greek system from Leslie Merritt, our director of fraternity and sorority life. And we explore the Blackman Collegian Academy, one of the most unique partnerships with high schools that MTSU has formed to provide campus access to exceptional students. I'm Andrew Oppmann, and this is Out of the Blue. Welcome to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Ottman. For the fifth straight year, MTSU Department of Recording Industry Chair Beverly Keel was honored with a Women in Music City Award from the Nashville Business Journal. Now this award honors women working in the music business who are making a creative and economic impact upon the industry. She is also a co-founder of Change the Conversation, a coalition helping women in the country music industry. Beverly, welcome to Out Thanks. of the Blue. Thanks, it's good to be here. This is a big deal. And you know, I, we, in the intro, you were telling me that not only did you win this fifth straight honor, they've put you in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> that makes me feel <laughs> what? old. That it is makes me feel old. It's fantastic. But it was, it's, it's a real tribute. And what was so exciting about that night is the uh, recording industry graduates who were named to that list too. So, oh, wow. yeah, we have uh, Martha Irwin Earls, who manages uh, Kane Brown, who was named to the list. Uh, Abby Wells Boz with uh, William Morris Endeavor was given an award. So that's the best part for me. And also Shannon Hatch, um, one of our graduates is at CSAC now. So the women from the recording industry department are really making their mark on the music industry. And fantastic that, that you've been continuously recognized for your leadership in this, which is just wonderful. And and as I understand, you also gave the keynote address uh, saying, quote, when you're the only female voice in the room, speak up loudly. Don't put up with being interrupted and demand attention. You've been trying to focus people's attention very rightly on the fact that women aren't being heard enough on country music. Well, tell me about you sitting in the parking lot on campus here. I hope I'm not, <laughs> I hope I'm not going off script too bad here. But tell, me, tell that story about you sitting in the parking lot listening to the radio on campus. Well, since 2014, I've been focused on trying to help get gender equality in country music. What that means is there are very few women being played on country radio. And Tuesday, I, w I have about an hour drive here. I was in the car about 20 minutes and I thought, God, I haven't heard a female voice. I wonder how long it's gonna take. <laughs> and so then it became like a challenge. They played, um, Runaway June, who's a tr female trio, mm -hmm. about 45 minutes in. And then maybe 30 minutes later, I heard uh, Maddie and Tay. But it took two hours and 40 minutes to hear a song by a solo female artist. So I sat behind Mass Com. But finally, I had, to, I had work to do. So I switched the radio station to my cell phone, walked in and put it on my desk. And you're live tweeting, live posting on yeah, Facebook yeah. the whole time because we're starting to follow you. We're just right. going like, oh my gosh, it, it, an hour's gone by. Now it's like, and now, and now. And here's a 15-year-old song by Dirk Bentley. Oh, here's the second song by Luke Combs. Here's the second song by Jason Aldean. No women. So. So let me explain why it matters. Mm -hmm. If there aren't female voices and female experiences on country radio, the l female listeners and their daughters will think their lives don't matter, their experiences don't matter. And if you think about when you were young, mm -hmm. what the Beatles meant to you or what uh, the, the Rolling Stones or Elvis or Bruce Springsteen or whatever, we need those role models and we also need to have artists interpret and share their perspective on the female experience, and that's what we're not getting now. When I first wrote about it in 2014, I was uh, strongly criticized by an industry trade publication that said there wasn't a problem, I was just making one where it didn't exist. Mm. And then flash forward six months later, and you had the quote from a radio consultant who advised his radio stations not to play two female songs in a row. There's this belief that women don't support other women, we don't wanna hear other women. 
which is ridiculous because if you look in the pop music format, almost all the superstars are female, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Rihanna. And it used to be like that in country with Faith Hill and Shania Twain and the Dixie Chicks and Taylor Swift and on and on. And it has gotten just out of hand to the point that it's discriminatory. Mm -hmm. And so we're fighting to um, change that. We want to uh, draw awareness to it. We want to create a community for young female singer-songwriters so they can support each other. They don't have to feel like they're alone. We want to provide resources for uh, young women who want to be executives in the industry. But it's much bigger than the three of us. It's really become a movement. And what's so rewarding now is to see other people take on the fight. Mm -hmm. You mentioned three, so you have two mm -hmm. collaborators. Why don't you talk about them real quick? Uh, so, um, Leslie Fram is the senior vice president at CMT, and I had been talking to her about the problem because people had been talking about it and didn't know what to do. Unbeknownst to me, she and, and Leslie, uh, Leslie and Tracy Gershon were also talking about it. And uh, Tracy Gershon's a well-known record executive, and she's an artist manager and works in publishing. And Leslie said, why don't the three of us get together? So we got together in late 2014 and decided in January we would invite some uh, about 40 or 50 music business leaders to my house for like a salon type environment just mm -hmm. to see is the interest there. And then after that, every meeting doubled. And sometimes we have several hundred people at our meetings. So uh, we're in our f almost fourth year. Wow. If you go to your Facebook page for Change of the Conversation, there's a tomato. Right. <laughs> Real quick, what's the tomato about? So the radio consultant, Keith Hill, the one that I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, he would advise his agents not to play two women back to back. And he, he used the analogy of a salad. And he said, you know, men like Keith Urban and Luke Bryan are the lettuce and women are the tomatoes. And that gave us a symbol. It did. It, it became a <laughs> rally and cry on Music Row. Mm -hmm. um, it made national news. Rush Lim Everybody from Rush Limbaugh to CBS News talked about it. It was proof positive that there was a problem. It wasn't something that we were exaggerating. Well, in a couple of days, we'll be leaving to go to the Grammys yes. again. I, I believe this will be our fifth or sixth year going to the Grammys, and that's another opportunity for you to showcase not only this conversation, the Change the Conversation, which you did a fabulous job last year, and I know that got some press too, oh, right. the, the forum we did, but also showcase your department, uh, because right. it really talks about the national prominence of, our, uh, of, of your department, Billboard Magazine and Hollywood Reporter, consistently ranking uh, the department is, it's not only top in the nation, but top in the world. Top Fan in the world. Fantastic stuff, yes. right? So when you talk about trying to change the trajectory of some careers, particularly women, you've got the means and the launch pad here at MTSU, right? The great thing about Grammy Week is Grammys celebrate excellence. Mm -hmm. And so um, we do two things that week. First of all, uh, we provide a place where we celebrate the excellence of our graduates who are winning Grammys, who are breaking records, who are doing amazing things. We also bring students out so they can learn from these alumni and also volunteer during official Grammy Week activities so they can mingle with some of the great leaders and they help uh, often with the Music Heroes Person of the Year and they'll come back and say, oh, you won't believe I just saw a, a black American Express card. I've never seen that before. <laughs> but really, um, Half the battle of showing our students they can succeed is introducing them to successful people. Right. Because when you're sitting at home or in a classroom and you see Jay-Z, Taylor Swift, or Beyonce out there, you're like, oh, I can never do that. But when we bring in Nathan Chapman, who, who's produced Taylor Swift, who sits down across the table from them at MTSU or at these events, then they go, oh, so you didn't know any more than I did at my age, and so I can achieve all that. Mm -hmm. So it's a real special week. Like we create a little home for the Nashville folks during Grammy week. We do. We, yeah. do. we plant our flag pretty high and, yeah. high and proud, right? But people right? love, they look forward to that. It's usually an afternoon event the day before the Grammys, mm -hmm. and we get a great turnout, and we get alums from uh, New York and L.A., and also maybe Atlanta or Chicago, where they may be nominated for a Grammy, so they're flying out. So, And you do a tremendous job with that. So. Uh, hey, listen, it's easy to promote it's Beverly Keel and, and the College fun. of Media Entertainment yeah. and your great department. Well, Beverly, thanks again for everything you do here at the university, but also the conversation you're leading in the industry. It makes a huge difference, and we appreciate it all. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Don't underestimate me. Don't count me out. Don't limit my potential. Don't block my runway. We are Middle Tennessee State University. I exceed expectations. 
I work harder than the rest. I set the tone. I still serve with honor. I go the distance. I am True Blue. Your MTSU Alumni Association has a goal of placing this pin on the lapel of all those who call this campus theirs. Let's pass that tradition on. Let's pass it on. Focused on the future, the School of Music at Middle Tennessee State University is home to music industry veterans and offers you a myriad of performance opportunities. A music degree, minutes from Nashville, Music City, USA, mtsu.edu slash music. Middle Tennessee State University offers more than 100 master's and doctoral degrees designed for working professionals. Many of MTSU's graduate programs are offered partially or completely online. More information is available at mtsu.edu slash graduate. Do you want the advantages of a major university with the Ivy League experience of an honors college? What you're looking for is right in front of you. Middle Tennessee State University's beautiful campus is home to over 140 majors taught in state-of-the-art facilities. Our undergraduates get hands-on experience, working alongside a highly respected and caring faculty. Take a closer look. Become True Blue. Pass the tradition on. Pass the tradition on. Pass it on! Don't underestimate me. Don't count me out. Don't block my runway. We are Middle Tennessee State University. I work harder than the rest. I set the tone. I am True Blue. Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Oppman. MTSU alumna Leslie Merritt plays an integral role in shaping a positive experience for present and future fraternity and sorority members. She is the Director of Fraternity and Sorority Life within the Center for Student Involvement and Leadership. And she joins us on Out of the Blue. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So we just got off the True Blue Tour, 14 cities, four states. Mm -hmm. And I was so happy to see you there talking about the great fraternity and sorority system we have at MTSU. Talk about the message that you tried to tell those students. It was great. We had so many perspective students come up to us, students who have already said they're coming to MTSU, but were excited to know that their high school involvement could easily translate into a lot of college involvement. That includes fraternity and sorority life for us. And it was really eye-opening to see how many high schoolers are already considering what it takes to get into a fraternity and sorority and what that means for their college experience. Well, I, I heard a lot of the conversations you had on the tour and what I was really happy to hear was how membership in the Greek system is really a positive step towards student success. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Of course. We believe that fraternity and sorority life membership adds value to your college career here. We know that the skills we provide, provide out of the classroom experiences that enhance your in the classroom lessons. Um, and more so than that, it makes this university that is large and we are proud to be a large institution in the state of Tennessee, but it makes it feel a little bit more like home. You mm -hmm. know you can impact um, just the community here. You can be part of the uh, True Blue family and make some valuable friendships while here. And it's really what you, what you described is so very important because the connectivity of involvement to success in, in, in the university, particularly for entering freshmen and transfer students, they get a built-in support system, right? Mm -hmm. Folks that can tell them where things are and how things mm -hmm. work, right? So there's a lot of mentoring that happens mm -hmm. for these new members, correct? Mm -hmm. Of course. So it's easy. We have so many great resources on campus, but for a lot of students, it's easier to go to a peer that's just a year or two older to them and ask them for advice about where do I go to study? What's the best spot? Where do I go for tutoring? Or just life questions. Our men and women in our fraternities and sororities truly care about the newer members that are coming in, and they provide immense mentorship throughout the years as an undergraduate. Well, Leslie, I, you're, you're one of our grads. You're a KD, a Kappa yes. Delta, and we were so happy to, to see you take this job and lead what I think is really the next great chapter of Greek life on our mm -hmm. campus. There's a strategic plan in mm -hmm. place. We were talking about it a little bit before the program. Why don't you describe that? Because I know marketing, like at the True Blue Tour, was a piece of that, right? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, it was. We just um, entered our 2018-2022 strategic plan. We came up with four major focuses. One of those is communications with our constituents. We've redesigned our annual report. We're working more with the development office on the True Blue Give. We've worked with the alumni office to ensure that our alumni still feel engaged. The next piece is a recruitment piece, which the True Blue Tour fits right into. We have a big goal um, by 2020 so one year after our strategic plans end of hitting 10% of campus. Right now we fluctuate between 5 to 6% and we would love to continue to move that bar. But we had to think about how do we get to more students. And some of that is to get to prospective students. So from the minute they walk on this campus, they already know they want to join. One of the messages that I know that you've been strong in saying is that uh, we've got a very interesting and robust Greek row that has changed in character mm -hmm. since its, its creation back in the late 90s, early, uh, mm -hmm. early part of the 21st century. It is now uh, a part of housing and residential life. Talk about what Greek Row at MTSU is now. Yeah, so six of the eight houses are now sorority houses. However, unlike the previous um, setup, they're now run like individual residential halls. They are staffed by housing staff members, and that provides more oversight than our office ever could. More so, the houses are beautiful inside. The way the women and the national organizations have come in and really redone some things, set some new rules in the house. Um, it's just extraordinary. Some chapters have off-campus houses, mm -hmm. some do not have houses at all. So really the character and makeup of an individual chapter, really there is no one set model, right? They can be several different things appealing to several different people, right? Of course, most of our fraternities have some type of facility off campus, whether that's an officially recognized house or a house that several of the men live in and they use for chapter meetings. The model of them getting to uh, pick and choose what they wanna do works best for them. What I tell alumni who come back and are they're surprised that the fraternities aren't on the row anymore. I tell them the experience might be different for the men now, but it doesn't mean that's a bad thing. They are still having a good experience, but one that fits them in today's world. So let's end with the elevator pitch here. Let's, let's just say that I'm a prospective student, hard to believe, but maybe a prospective parent. Why Greek life at MTSU? What, what are the advantages? What do you have to offer me? We are a values-based system, meaning for us, we base our um, practices, our programs, what we say we are around certain areas. One of those is scholarship. Consistently, the Greek average is above the all-student average. We constantly say to be a member you have to be a student first. Next I would say if you want to be a leader on campus come join us. We're proud that the Student Government Association student body president is a very our very own sorority woman and leaders on campus from student orientation assistants to tour guides so many of them are fraternity and sorority women and men. Also if you want to give back to the community we do countless of hours of community service work. We gave over a hundred thousand dollars dollars to those in need last year. And I think the selling point for so many of us is while this is a large campus, we will make it feel more like home. You will find some of the men and women who will carry you through this next 20, 50, 60 years of your life that you can celebrate good times with, but also be there for hard times. And for me, that's what made all the difference in my experience. And I would want to provide that to the next group of men and women who come in. Well, Leslie, thank you for being on Out of the Blue, and thank you for everything you're doing to make Greek life better on our campus. Of course. And we'll be right back. Don't underestimate me. Don't count me out. Don't limit my potential. Don't block my runway. We are Middle Tennessee State University. I exceed expectations. I work harder than the rest. I set the tone. I still serve with honor. I go the distance. I am True Blue! Your MTSU Alumni Association has a goal of placing this pin on the lapel of all those who call this campus theirs. Let's pass that tradition on. Let's pass it on. Focused on the future, the School of Music at Middle Tennessee State University is home to music industry veterans and offers you a myriad of performance opportunities. A music degree, minutes from Nashville, Music City, USA, mtsu.edu slash music. 
Middle Tennessee State University offers more than 100 master's and doctoral degrees designed for working professionals. Many of MTSU's graduate programs are offered partially or completely online. More information is available at mtsu.edu slash graduate. Do you want the advantages of a major university with the Ivy League experience of an honors college? What you're looking for is right in front of you. Middle Tennessee State University's beautiful campus is home to over 140 majors taught in state-of-the-art facilities. Our undergraduates get hands-on experience, working alongside a highly respected and caring faculty. Take a closer look. Become True Blue. Pass the tradition on. Pass the tradition on. Pass it on! Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Oppman. MTSU has a unique relationship with Blackman High School in Murfreesboro. We are a founding partner of the school's Collegiate Academy. Now, one of the features of this great program is that it allows Academy students to participate in one of several arranged visits to the MTSU campus each semester during the academic year. This allows freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors to meet MTSU students, faculty, and administrators and learn about the university's 240 undergraduate and graduate programs. Here to tell us more, Dr. Lisa Justice, principal of Blackman High School. Welcome to Out of the Blue. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. We are so proud of the Collegiate Academy. And uh, you know, I know we joke about this. this you, you announced your plans to do the Academy. President McPhee was actually out of town. He was at his uh, condo in Florida, reading about it on uh, dnj.com, and picked up the cell phone and says, I wanna be a part of this, right? And that, that's really how it all began, right? It really did. He, he called me up and, and my secretary said, Dr. McPhee's on the phone, and I thought, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and he was, and he said, I've read about your, your plan. Uh, we wanna be the primary sponsor. Mm -hmm. And it was on. I think we had a meeting with, with uh, you and some vice pre presidents the next week. Mm -hmm. so. The speed in which this relationship started was really incredible mm -hmm. because there wasn't anything like this no. on either of our horizons, this Collegiate Academy. Why don't you talk about why you created this at the very beginning? Why did this idea come to surface at Blackman? Right. So um, I had just become principal at Blackman High School and I was looking at a lot of things and taking in a lot, looking at data. And students coming out of middle school have options. Mm -hmm. They have options and they can go to a magnet school. They can go to a private school. And what I wanted is to have a program at our large home, community, comprehensive high school where we would be a choice for that student as well. Blackman was already our, our number one partner in dual enrollment classes to right. begin with. If I'm describing this correctly, the, the idea of the Collegiate Academy was, in, was not just solely to emphasize dual enrollment classes. It was to create uh, a, a new standard and a new uh, really bar for these great students to achieve to with mentorships and provide experiences on our campus. So talk to me about what, as a prospective student, I would have to accomplish to be in the academy. What are you looking for? Right, so we're definitely looking for the academic component, and that includes AP classes, it includes dual enrollment. They also do uh, research throughout the years, culminating in a um, research paper and project. The capstone is really a remarkable opportunity for us at MTSU too, because the relationships that these students have built through their campus visits and other connections. Right. A lot of our faculty become their mentors. They do. Depending on their research and their their project, uh, they, they are have to find their own outside mentors. Sometimes it's within the community, but oftentimes we can send you, you all a list and you're great at um, connecting professors with uh, our students if they're doing research in their areas. From our perspective, we wanted them to see themselves as college students. And, and even though they're still in high school, mm -hmm. we wanted them to see the, the possibilities of this is the path you're on, right. and these are the opportunities that await you. And that's exactly kind of what, what we're interested in too, is we want them to have these experiences with dual enrollment, with AP, with this Collegiate Academy, with the connection with MTSU, to have that college experience while they're still in the 
kind of the loving, caring arms of a, you know, of a <laughs> high school um, before they get out into, in, into bigger areas. What's the biggest advice for other schools that are thinking about programs like this? Uh, I, I think the, the beginning of it is important um, to find out, really to take um, kind of an, an assessment of your, of your school. What do you do really well? And kind of make that the core of your, of your academy. Um, and then visit us or visit some other people that have academies because there are steps that we take in the presentations that we made. We have a step-by-step, -step, this is how you can do it, tailored to your own needs and what your community needs. But I would say those two things, start with what's really good, where you are already, mm -hmm. and then reach out and talk to people, come visit. I know this is the fourth year of the complete year of the academy. Now you're seeing those first freshmen yes. come out as seniors. Yes. And your idea go from, you know, hey, we got to get this thing started to fully implemented. How does that feel as the principal of the, uh, and the person who put all this in motion? It's right. pretty satisfying, right? It, well, it feels great. And I think this time of year when the students are presenting their capstone research and they're doing their projects, um, they'll be defending their research and their projects to a faculty committee in two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and I get to sit on those, so I, I can't wait to hear. But just listening um, to what they're doing, and they're all in the, in the community making presentations and providing solutions to even community problems. And to see our students stand up and you know, present themselves in that way, um, you know they're going to be successful, and that's, that's what it's all about. So I've heard you talk about this program and now I'm excited. How do I apply if I'm a student or if I'm the parent of a student? Right, first of all, I'd say go to our website. Uh, the Blackman Collegiate Academy has a nice web page there with all of the application process and all of the rubrics for what we look at in mm -hmm. each part of the application process. Uh, January, February will be the, the time for our application process. And I know you look back at those classes and you, you try to measure what kind of impact has this academy had upon them and what demographics do they present? For the class of 2019, um, those students have a combined uh, 3.9 GPA and they have an ACT average of 28.27 and that's, that's an amazing achievement and I'm, I'm excited for them because that puts this academy in the mix for any in any school across the state as being one of the top in the state. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Justice, thank you for everything you do, not only uh, for the Collegian Academy, but the great partnership we have with the high school at MTSU. Thank you. And this wraps up another edition of Out of the Blue. You can find more stories and videos about the campus 24 hours a day by visiting our website, mtsunews.com. If you haven't been to the site in a while, check it out. It's been revamped and redesigned with additional content from MTSU Magazine, and all of our other publications. We also invite you to follow MTSU on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for additional special content. I'm Andrew Ottman. I hope you will always remain true blue, and Happy New Year. <laughs>